Hello you guys, welcome back to my channel. I am very excited for today's video because we are gonna be talking about all of the products that I have set out on my list of items that I really wanna focus on panning next year. I have been doing a plan to pan list every single year since like 2020 or 2021, and I really look forward to filming this video every single year, so I'm very excited to share my focus products with you guys. I do plan to scale back a little bit on my project panning. I do believe I have a get ready with me talking about this so I will leave that link down below in case you have questions about kind of why I'm thinking about scaling back but I will absolutely still be doing a rolling project 10 pan and still the deco panning project pan and likely the graveyard project pan possibly the whole collection project pan I have not solidified my plans yet I do also want to let you guys know that I am pre-filming this. Um, obviously, right now you're still seeing my like Halloween background. I am filming this before Halloween, and I don't anticipate this video is going to go up until like end-ish of November, but I am trying to post every single day in the month of November and then possibly not be as like diligent about posting every single day in December. So that takes a lot of planning, a lot of pre-planning. And this is one of those videos that I've already picked out my products. I don't think these products are going to change. Perhaps I will use some of these products between now and the end of the year, but I'm not gonna empty anything out. So this is one of the more, I'm gonna say easy <laughs> videos to kind of pre-film three-ish weeks in advance, possibly. So. I hope that's okay with you guys. If you're interested in the 25 products that I wanna focus on in 2025, stay tuned. First, if you have yet to subscribe to my channel and you like project painting content, palette themed content, or just chit chatting about makeup, I'd love if you'd consider subscribing before moving on. And other than that, let's jump into the video. Okay, I don't really have like a particular order that I'm gonna go in. And when I was selecting these products, I was really trying to focus on products that are getting maybe a little bit older in my collection. I tried to choose a variety of different type of products so I don't have like 15 lip products that I'm focused on. And I also wanted to make sure I was choosing products that even if some of these products aren't my favorite, I wouldn't be hate panning these products. I'm not thinking I'm going to declutter any of these products that I like I really want to be in it for the long haul in it till the end of these products and my goal with every product that I'm sharing today is to empty the product out in the year of 2025 will I be successful I've never been fully successful in a in completing all of the products on my plan to pan list but I'm going to try and do my best so Let's start with a couple of glowy products, and maybe I shouldn't have selected two, but both of these products are getting old in my collection, and I don't want them to go bad, specifically my Auric, because this was a pricier product. So I have my Auric Glow Lust Radiant Luminizer. I have mine in the shade Selenite. I absolutely love Samantha Ravindal, so I really wanted to support her brand, but at the time that I purchased this, I also had the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter, which I finally finished this year. I do have the e.l.f. product and I have many other products like this. Shame on me for continuing to buy some of them, but I really want to focus on this one. I don't necessarily know if I would purchase this one again, potentially the Charlotte Tilbury. I really don't know which of my glowy products I would repurchase again. And sometimes I figure that out through project panning. Sometimes I feel like I like a product or I don't mind a product, but then when I start to actually pan a product, my mind can shift because you're using the product consistently. You, I feel like sometimes when you're not using a product consistently, you can kind of tr trick your mind into believing like, oh, maybe I just don't like this product this day because I'm having a bad skin day or whatever it might be. But when you're using it like every single day for weeks or months on end, then you, you can get a better idea about the product. I'm not saying I don't think that I'm going to like fall out of love with this product, but I think in my mind, I love this product because of Samantha but I rarely, rarely reach for this. So I want to give myself that extra motivation to reach for this, to use this, to love this, and hopefully to finish it up before the end of the year. I would say this product is just about full. <laughs> so then I have my first mood lighting glow drops. I purchased this because I wanted to see if it was a dupe for these other products, which are more expensive. And I will say this is a really beautiful glowy product. It does have a bit of a tack to it. So I definitely could use it as a standalone primer. However, my thing is I typically am looking for like a truly gripping primer. This does have a tack though. So I really should not give myself that excuse. 
it's a beautiful glow but it is definitely more of like a golden glow which sometimes i feel like can look not right on my skin especially if i'm not going over top of this with foundation but i purchased it i do think it's a beautiful product i would like to use it up rather than declutter so this is item number two then i have one true primer and that is the iconic london underglow blurring primer as i was looking through my primer collection trying to decide which primer i wanted to finish up i tried to grab one of the ones that was older in my collection i do really enjoy this primer i think it's a really nice primer it does give kind of this really beautiful kind of just blurred effect to the skin and this one is beautiful on days that i am maybe just doing concealer and not going over top with foundation i really like it for those days as well so i don't think i'll have any issue of finishing this one up and i'm excited to focus on that i do have bronzing drops I had to choose one of my bronzing drop products. I'm like, girl, we need to like focus on one, work it, work it out. So I have the Drunk Elephant Anti-Pollution Sunshine Drops that I decided to pull out. It was between this and the Say drops that I have that are kind of bronzy. Uh, but I would really like to finish these off and then transition back over to the Say and then kind of decide between the two. This is, I believe, my second or third bottle of the Drunk Elephant Debronzy Drops. I think these are beautiful. I love to use this to match my my uh, body to my neck when I am self-tanned, which I have not been self-tanning lately, but we'll get back into it. Summer will eventually come back here in Minnesota. So this is another product that I'm including. And then I have three separate foundations which i might end up regarding this but up first i have this one from laura mercier this is one of my favorite foundations in my collection so i wanted to also sprinkle in some favorites here this one is getting to be a little bit older though so i want to use this up and then i would likely purchase this one again it is a very beautiful foundation i love the coverage i love how thin it is on the skin and i think i will enjoy getting to use that then i have the it cosmetics cc nude glow this one is a bit of a risk because i feel like if i were to consistently use this i may end up deciding that it is not a favorite for me i still don't think at this moment i don't think this would be a repurchase for me it is a little bit more full coverage than i typically like to go for and it's full coverage and glowy so sometimes i just feel like it can get a little bit messy it is also definitely a deeper shade for me so definitely more of a self-tan shade however i could also use this to mix with foundations that might be a little bit too light for me so hopefully i will find ways to make this work this is one that makes me nervous that i won't finish but we'll see and then this one also makes me nervous that I won't finish it, but I'm going to tell you guys how I'm going to use this one. This is the Nabla Skin Realist Beautifying Tinted Balm. And this used to be my favorite tinted moisturizer when this first launched back in like 2021, 2020, 2021 time. I just do not love this on my skin anymore. However, I have been doing my makeup quite a bit where I'll just like play around with eyeshadow so that I can test eyeshadow. And I always like to take my pictures of like the looks that I create so that I can come back and do like a palette a day for 30 days or share my looks with you guys. But it feels weird when I just have eyeshadow on. But it does feel weird when I just have eyeshadow on. So sometimes I like to like obviously put on some makeup but usually i'm just going to then wipe my face like wash my face right off so i'm going to reserve this for those times that i just want to put makeup on so i have like a full face of makeup to go with my eyeshadow but i i'm going to be wiping it right off because i don't love this one okay i think my current oldest concealer in my collection with the exception of the bare minerals which i'm currently working on and may or may not finish that one by the end of the year if so if not, I will just also focus on that one next year. But I have the LYS Triple Fix Full Coverage Concealer, so I am hoping to empty up this one. This is one that I would repurchase unless I change my mind as I'm panning it, but I do really enjoy that concealer. Okay, this this year I have been focused on my Rowan uh, 75 Degrees Quad in my Rolling Project 10 pan, and I'm going to do the same thing next year, but we're moving on to the mo to the Rowan Mood Forever quad. And I was going between this and my 1111, but I wanted to select the Mood Forever because this has both like warm and cool tones. And I'm really, really curious to see what kind of a dent we can make in this quad. And I'm very curious to track my usage on this as opposed to the 75 degrees and see if I end up using this one more throughout 2025 than I did my Rowan 75. I really have enjoyed kind of just having the Rowan quad just as a focus this year and oftentimes four or five times a month it seems that I'm just like dashing out the door for work and I'll reach for my Rowan quads just to like pop a little something on the eye and it works really well for that I 
I love this one even just a little bit more. That's why I'm curious, like, will I end up using this one even more? Hoping I can get a pan in all of the shades and potentially even use up shades. My least favorite shade in this palette is this shade right here. It's this satin cream shade, but I feel like I could get a lot of use out of that on the inner corner, and I'm very, I'm very excited to see what we can do with this one. All right, I have two powders that I want to focus on. First one being the Bare Minerals Bare Pro. I do have this in a full size, so I would love to get through my little mini in the Bare minerals this is in the shade light 22 cool this is a really beautiful powder foundation that i mostly use this a powder to set my face which i know is a little bit extra but that is the way that i like to use it and i want to see you know obviously how many powders i can move through in a year so picking a little deluxe size seems like an obvious choice to help move some powders out of the collection and then I have the CoverGirl clean fresh powder right here i do currently have a pan in this powder and i feel like I should have no problem emptying out this before the end of by the end of 2025. I actually am currently using this powder just about every day. I don't think I'll finish this one before the end of the year, but we'll see how much we can but we'll see how much more we can expand the pan and hopefully this will be an easier powder even more to finish in 2025. I do really enjoy this powder. I think it's really beautiful. It's lightweight and it doesn't take the life out of my skin. So this is a powder I enjoy reaching for on a daily basis. Bronzer makes me nervous, but I wanted to challenge myself a little bit. I have been self tanning less. And so if we keep up with that path, I feel like it would be the perfect time for me to focus on the oldest bronzer in my collection, which is the NARS Laguna Laguna bronzer. This is the sun washed version. So it is, I want to say this is baked and it's just a little bit lighter, a little bit more buildable, which really does work well for me because sometimes I go a little overboard with my bronzer, but this is such a like hard pressed bronzer. It still looks beautiful on the skin. Like it's not hard to like bronze the skin, but it's so hard pressed. I literally feel like I could reach for this all year long and this won't be an empty. I'll be really, really curious to track my progress with this one, but this one definitely makes me nervous. It wouldn't be an empty by the end of the year, even with good effort. And then I also wanted to pull out my Give Beauty Pick It Up Cream Contour and Powder Bronzer Duo. I have the shade Toast in. I do already have a pan in the bronzer. I love this bronzer. I've talked about this duo a lot on my channel. I will say the bronzer is definitely more warm and a little bit deeper. So this is something that is not going to match me well when I'm fair, but hopefully these will complement each other well then and won't compete for attention and then i do kind of struggle to reach for the cream contour just because i don't contour that frequently but i feel like rolling this into a project will kind of give me some motivation to reach for this and even if i don't finish up the cream contour by the end of the year i would love to finish the powder bronzer and then at least have a pan in the cream contour that would feel like a success to me for blush i want to empty out my bite beauty daycation blush bite beauty has not burned a brand for quite some time now and i did make a good dent in this this year in other projects i think this was in my whole collection project pan i feel like it's getting harder and harder to squeeze out it is a really beautiful glowy pink cream blush and i would just love to have a blush empty and i feel like this is like probably one of my best shots at having a blush empty because it is most used and it's a cream product actually it's yeah cream creamy liquid thick anyway i'm stopping there okay this was something I wanted to finish this year and didn't. This is like the eyeliner that will not stop lining. This is the Ilia eyeliner in the shade Dusk. I believe this is, yeah, this is what I have in my waterline today. Really beautiful dark brown shade. Does a nice job of lasting in my waterline the majority of the day. Um, how much do I have left? Like I've had this for so long, you guys. This is how much I have left. Like we still have a decent amount and I swear... It just like, it just keeps going. It just keeps going. I st I'm nervous about this one. I'm still nervous about finishing this up before the end of the year, even though I reach for this probably at least four to five times a week. I always, I almost always just do a dark brown in the waterline, especially day to day. I'm still nervous about that one. Okay, when we were talking about bronzers, I forgot to mention, I'm also gonna focus on my Rare Beauty bronzing stick in the shade Happy Soul. This is this bronzing stick all the way rolled down and then I'll roll it up for you guys right now. That is how much I have left. I feel like that is something that I would be capable of finishing before the end of the year. I do like having 
easy stick products like this to kind of travel with me if I'm have like an overnight um, or if I'm traveling they're just really really easy sometimes if I'm like trying to get ready like in my car if I have to bring like a bag of makeup to work it's just easy products like this are just much easier and I feel like I made a decent dent in this this year. I feel like I've, I've, I've made decent progress with this. I feel like I could potentially finish this one before the end of the year. And now I'm realizing I have a lot of bronzers that I want to focus on. So we might have selected too many bronzers. But another product is not this face palette as a whole. But I would love to finish up and complete this pan. This is the bronzed bondi bronzer from becca this is the après ski glow palette my favorite highlighter of all time is also in this palette this is rose quartz i thought about also including rose quartz but this pan is so large that i'm like uh i don't think i could do that and then i also thought like do i want to do a pan that face palette and i just don't feel like i would have fun doing that so i would love to finish this this bronzer pan off this is what i'm putting into this like planning list this planning video um but i would also love if i could at least get a pan on rose quartz that would be really exciting and then i'll also mention another face palette that i'm rolling in specifically for one pan and that is the kind of like i'm gonna say lid setting shade i feel like i thought about like choosing an eyeshadow lid setting shade or a couple to focus on but then i was like you know what i could try and just empty out this whole pan from the smashbox cali contour face palette because i have raved about this face palette it has been a favorite face palette in my collection similar to this one from becca and i would just love if both of these face palettes could have an empty pan by the end of the year i feel like that would feel so good so that is going to be the goal with this and then i do have just quite a few lip products so i have one lip liner that i selected it is the vive lip liner in the shade velvet sands i have already done a lot of work with this lip liner i feel like this is about half of what it used to be i've worked on this in several projects but i've definitely gotten more into lip liner this year i still do not wear lip liner every single day but i would like to focus on at least one lip liner before the to finish in 2025 and i feel like this is the one that has the most progress it's a really beautiful kind of neutral warm brown for every day and i feel like i could finish this off i have two lawless forget the filler products so i have this mini lip gloss which is my last remaining lawless mini lip gloss i will say i personally prefer the full size i don't love the doe foot on the minis like i just feel like they do not disperse the product how i want i actually i'm gonna put a little bit of a little bit of this on right now yeah it's just there is definitely a different experience that you get with the full size lawless but i still love the lip gloss so my goal is to finish this up i should have no problem doing that i've already finished multiple lawless forget the fillers this year in a full size it doesn't take a lot of effort to finish them so i'm hoping to finish this one before the end of 2025 and then i also am going to include this fenty beauty cream lip gloss this is in the shade candy milk the gloss balm cream this is one of the older fenty lip glosses in my collection i feel like i've had this for a little bit now and i just never get myself to reach for this it's a really really beautiful shade i feel like this is a very wearable shade uh, i just typically reach for the actual fenty gloss balm so we're going to focus on the cream product this year and i feel like i can easily finish this one up I'm also going to roll in a Kopari lip glossy. I still have some Kopari lip glossies lingering around my collection. I think I finished off like five or six of these at this point in time. And I still have another like three or four in my collection because I typically buy the three pack when I purchase these. I will say the Ulla Henriksen Pout Preserve has replaced the Kopari lip glossy for me. I know there's a decent price difference, but for me, I just love the experience of the Ulla Henriksen but i'm not going to declutter my kapari lip glossies that would be wasteful so i do want to use them up and i am going with the clear because i feel like this would be a really easy one to focus on it literally goes with everything and i feel like i should have no problem finishing that up then i wanted to pick kind of like a liquid lipstick product so i have the rare beauty lip cream lip cream and this is in the shade courage this is a really beautiful my like hand things on so i'm sorry that i haven't really been swatching things but i'll swatch this this is a really beautiful kind of mid-toned light to mid-toned pinky brown shade i and this is like a type of shade that i can really get into it is a more comfortable formula than a true liquid lipstick so i feel like i could get a lot of good use out of this day to day even at work and this is like just giving me motivation to reach for this otherwise this just goes neglected i think i will struggle to finish that i truly do just because i don't 
typically reach for anything other than a lip gloss. So we're gonna motivate myself to reach for something else. Then I have this Hourglass lip product. This is in the shade Slip. This is one of those like glossy lipsticks. Kinda wanna add a little of this too. Kinda like the Tarte Maracuja. I actually thought about rolling in the Tarte Maracuja, but <laughs> this one was staring right up at me. So I was like, I'll go with the Hourglass. I think this is going to take reminding. Like I'm gonna have to remind myself I'm working on this. But if I remind myself to work on it, I should be able to use this up. It gives a glossy lip effect, which is what I love and look for. So if I can't, shame on me. And then I do think my 25th and final product, I think I will struggle to finish up just because it's a potted product. And it's not a potted product that I'm reaching for in the evening time, but rather it does give a plumping lip effect. So I like to reach for it during the day. It's the Lawless Forget the Filler Overnight Lip Plumping Mask. And this one... Oh, this one's Sweet Dreams. I was actually going to, I'm not gonna grab Sweet Dreams. This is literally brand new. I was gonna grab Cherry Vanilla. Okay, here is Cherry Vanilla. I mean, I have used like a good amount of this and I'll be really curious to see like how deep this actually goes, but it's a potted lip product and unless I reach for this like as I'm getting ready, I just don't reach for this product. It is really beautiful. It gives kind of that same minty sensation you get from the Lawless Forget the Filler lip gloss. And it feels like a hydrating lip mask while still plumping the lips in a non-painful way. It's a really interesting and unique product I really enjoy, but I have found myself forgetting to reach for this or just not reaching for this. So I wanna give myself that excuse, that motivation, but I am a little bit nervous about this one. But those are the 25 makeup products that I'm going to focus on trying to complete off in the year of 2025. I'm sure I'll pull other products in as well, so stay tuned for my projects. But I would love to know what is on your list of products that you are interested in panning. Let a girl know in the comments below. Other than that, thank you guys so much for sticking around to watch today's video and for supporting me and my channel as you guys always do. I love you guys so much, and I will catch you in my next video. Bye.